Welcome back everyone to the 1987 Super Mod. This is uh, my save, the AWA save. We are here beginning the last week of July of 1987. And we do not have any television tapings this week. So we are waiting strictly for our tour. Our next show is set to begin on Friday. And that's in four days. It'll be tour event number 65. And if we go ahead and take a look at our spreadsheet, that brings us, we had just finished this previous block up here. So now we're moving to a new block that is shifting these tour shows over. So we're starting back at the beginning, City, which is St. Paul, Minnesota. And so actually the last card that we just dealt with on 64 will be happening again here in St. Paul, Minnesota. So we got quite a bit of ways here before we get there. Let's take a look and see what's going on here in the world of wrestling. So they're showing us uh, Yatsu won the NWA International Heavyweight title there in uh, All Japan. For those of you not familiar, uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling at this point in time was still a member of the NWA, and they carried a couple of the NWA titles, including the NWA International Heavyweight title and, all the way th and also the NWA United National title. They also carried the international tag team titles. Ooh, the Great American Bash was last night. So uh, this is pretty exciting for Jim Crockett Promotions. It looks like uh, it was shown on cable, got 205,000 buys, not bad. They held it at the Greensboro Coliseum. It didn't sell out, which is shocking, but what a nice rating at 94. Flair defeats Koloff. Nice rating. Blanchard defeats Luger in an I quit match, so they must have turned Luger face here. Nice. Rhodes defeats Ron Simmons. Yeah, Rhodes won the U.S. heavyweight title. U.S. tag title titles are defended. Rogers and Rotundo were overcome by Garvin and Wyndham, so that means they must have turned uh, Mike Rotundo heel. He wasn't a heel originally. The Road Warriors beat the Russian team, so in this case, that would be Ivan Koloff and Al Blake, who wrestled as, uh, oh, what was his name? Vladimir Petrov, yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty exciting right there. And a world six-man title. Oh, look at that. Eddie Guerrero is carrying the six-man title with uh, two Mexican wrestlers. And they beat Sullivan in the Midnight Express. Interesting. Ladies match and then match down here that would have never existed on a show like that. So that's pretty cool. Cool card for the NWA. Pretty uh, pretty accurate for the time. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, Continental Championship Wrestling had an event. Not much to look at in that card. WF had a live event. Main event was uh, Junkyard Dog beating Jake Roberts. Again, with the way this has to be set up for lesser, uh, you don't get the top talent. Like You just don't see Hulk Hogan wrestle on these cards. Um, or an Andre the Giant. It's, it's kind of frustrating, but it's just the way it goes with uh, TEW. TEW is not designed for this. And there's the All Japan Summer Action Series. So this is a really cool part of this game. Uh, it's a little known fact that the Destroyer made a comeback in late 1986 in Japan where he was working tag and six-man tags with uh, Baba. And he stayed there for at least a year, maybe a little bit longer. Um, he might have been there all the way until early 88. It was pretty fun. So it's cool to see uh, the Destroyer was not even in the Gennady version. I had to create him and, you know, it was a uh, pain going through and putting him into all the titles um, that he had won throughout his career. But he's there. He's in the game. And uh, it's exciting to see. So pretty cool stuff. If we click on him here, we can show his title history. That's the work I had to put in. He held other titles uh, in his career, but I didn't uh, put them in there do the full research for it. So right now he actually holds the PWF World Tag Team title with Giant Baba. So 
This is a really cool match, Baba and the Destroyer versus the Funk Brothers, and it got ranked to 99, and you can guarantee that uh, the Funk Brothers would have sold hard for that match. It would, probably would have been a 99 quality match. So uh, one of the knocks I've gotten on this super mod is that everything is overpowered, and it depends how you look at it. I understand people thinking it's overpowered, but you're also looking at one of the greatest wrestling points in history, and these were awfully talented wrestlers back then. So this is a uh, fun touring card here for All Japan as part of their Summer Action Series. So good, uh, good stuff. There you have Denny Brown making the trek to uh, Japan, defending the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title. They had him beat Tiger Mask. I doubt that would have happened in real life, but that's interesting. Denny Brown was a good wrestler. So, all right, this is fun stuff. So let's keep moving ahead here. And we're going to get all the way to Friday when our tour starts. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, do our tour, which the matches are going to match what we did in the last episode. But we'll put a different spin on things and keep it interesting for the tour. So let's see what the uh, what the game, game continues to give us here. This This could always be interesting. So this is one thing I can't stand is that they constantly make new tag teams. Okay, Hercules and Harley Race, that's realistic. They're not going to be called Next Wave. Come on. They're both part of the Heenan family at this point. It's it's not necessary. Or, you know, two enhancement talents forming a team and becoming the Psycho Ward. No, nobody cares. It's stupid. I actually go in and, and edit those out because it just irritates me for some reason. Let's take a look at this... Uh, WWF on MSG card. These this uh, these cards tend to use the big name wrestlers. So right there, Jake Roberts must have been turned heel by the WWF here, and Hogan beats him. So at this point, Brutus Beefcake has turned face. So we're dealing with the new Dream Team, which is Dino Bravo and Greg Valentine. The Rougeos are still baby faces at this point. This is a fun card. It's fun looking at this stuff because I remember being a kid and seeing this stuff for real. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And it's fun seeing this in the game. NWA live event. So again, this is one that I experimented and turned it into a normal show. So it's going off a of pay-per-view here. Uh, they ran the Philadelphia Civic Center. This is real. They really ran there. They only drew 430, so that's that's not good. But uh, Flair versus Jimmy Valiant. Jimmy, not Jimmy Valiant, was still a baby face. So that's interesting. Decent card there. Rock and Roll Express won the tag team title a couple weeks ago in the game. It's fun stuff to watch this and look at it. Championship Sports, this is world class. Kerry is still out at this point, but they're doing all right at 69. That's not a good attendance number for the Will Rogers Coliseum, but that's a whole other story. All right, let's keep moving along here. Part of the fun of this game is watching this and seeing what else is going on around. I'm not above logging into the other promotions and making corrections. Uh, to me, it's just fun to keep things realistic or as close to realism as, as possible. Frank Melson got hurt. Uh, we talked outlaw promotions in an earlier episode, and uh, we created Windy City Wrestling, who was an outlaw slash independent promotion. They actually came about in January of 88, but I put them in the game here in uh, May of 87. Because I wanted to play as Windy City and put all their wrestlers in there. And it was about 30 wrestlers I had to add into the system. So Frank Melson was a big-time wrestler in Windy City for quite a few years. He was a huge wrestler like a Jerry Back Blackwell, but he was tall too. And uh, he was talented. So here we go. Here's what I just caught. Frank Melson is not even in Windy City. He was stolen by... Jim Crockett Promotions and signed to an exclusive written developmental deal. So he's actually working in Florida. Wow, interesting. 
Okay, there's nothing too important that I want to look at here. We'll move on to Thursday. Mikey Jones is another enhancement talent that uh, I created for AWA. He's being featured right there. His real name was Mike Jones, but there's already Mike Jones in the game, so I gave him the, nickname, uh, the name of uh, Mikey Jones. So we have a note. Something's going on here. Oh, no. Mr. Saito got injured here. Oh, this isn't good. He's a uh, he's one of our top talents. Granted, he's about 48 years old at this point, but we got to take a look at this. We got to take a look and see what happened to him. This isn't cool. Um, let's take a look at medical here and see how long he's out. 38 days. That's not terrible, but uh, not good. Not good at all. So, what else is going on here? Let's take a look at one of these New Japan cards. So New Japan is in the Big Fight Series, Summer Big Fight Series. Again, historically accurate, that was the name of their tours. So that's obviously where Saito got injured, was in that main event. So you can see that they're still free to form stables, as New Japan was always known for. So the order was... Uh, Obviously created, fabricated name by the AI. They got a stacked roster here and pulling a decent number. Okay, we're going to move along to Friday here. There's an actual wrestler here named Man Mountain Mike, but AWA. In the mid-80s, also had an enhancement talent called Man Mountain Mike. So I actually have one in uh, on my roster. In fact, I can show him to you right now. There he is. Different guy. New champion in Jim Crockett Promotions. Let's see who won what title here. Looks like two titles might have changed hands. Uh, this could be something bad. They do some goofy stuff. Okay, Dusty Rhodes lost the U.S. title to Lex Luger. Okay. And the World Women's title changed hands. So, again, somewhat realistic stuff, nothing too crazy. I hate when you see stuff like Jimmy Valiant beats Ric Flair for the World Heavyweight title, and come on, it's just not going to happen. Let's see what happened on the WWF tour. Steamboat over Orndorf. And here we go. Andre and... Next Wave, because that's the name for Hercules and uh, Harley Race. How stupid. Ken Patera and the Stallions. Cool. That's what your typical tour cards look like. Again, I changed some of the lesser cards over to tour cards, and a lot of six-mans. A lot of six-man tags. So, okay, that's, that's exciting stuff to see. we got a note here. Eddie Guerrero, one night deal with Pacific Northwest. Okay. All right, we're going to move along to our card here. We are going to be back, get that set right away. We're back in our home area. That's a good size crowd. We keep growing here, 8,500. Wow. So let's go seven to nine. We're shooting to try to get us in St. Paul. Bam. Right there, River Center. Beautiful. Now let's see what our backstage problems are. Okay, it's Von Rochke with his protege, Kevin Collins. Wicked mullet. You see that mullet? On a scale of fierce mulletude, that one's at least at least a seven. All right, let's see who's not going to be here. Saito and the terrorists, both of which I don't believe are on our card. No, they are not. So, okay, Vivian Vachon versus Sherry Martel. Sherry's going to go over clean because she's not going to have it. Now nah, we're going to make her cheat. Going to make her cheat this time. 
She just will not drop a match to Vivian Vachon here. And she's got cool momentum. That's okay. We'll get her built up on uh, on TV and some squash matches, and she'll be back on and be okay. There's Sherry. Let's get her with a tainted wind here. There you go. Okay. Next bout, the Guerrero brothers versus the Russians. The Guerrero brothers won the last time. So we're going to have the Russians win this one. Chavo and Hector. I keep forgetting I've been doing it this way so long. I save myself so much time. There's the Russians. Let's give Boris the win. Okay. And I'm pretty certain that was intended to be 12 minutes. Yeah, now we're moving over to 14. So it's Ali Khan versus the Assassin. Let's leave this one and see what happens. Let's see who wins this one. Khan wins twice in a row, I'd be surprised. So our next match is LKC versus Lawler. Of course, we're going to have Lawler go over again. It's another 14-minute match. Maybe next time with the Russians, we'll do a six-man against uh, all three Guerreros. Could put the Russians with LKC versus all three Guerreros. That could be pretty cool. Jerry Lawler's going to take this one. Now we're moving up to 16-minute matches. Gagne versus Robinson again. And again, with that one, I don't, I don't care who wins. We're not going to make it. A technical master class this time because obviously Greg Gagne doesn't have the goods for it. Again, I don't care who wins. Von Rochke versus Rose and Summers. See that? I remembered at that time. <laughs> and we're going to have Wahoo go over this one just to change things up. So that's 18 minutes here. Wahoo's going to go over. Our main event was the Beers versus Slaughter. I want to see how this works out being that it's in the Midwest. I want to see if we get a better score on this one. We should. We do have television in Winnipeg, but it's going to take a while for all that to get built up. So I'm not going to put a winner. I don't care. We are going to make an epic. No, we're not going to make an epic because the beers didn't have the psychology for it. So we're just going to leave this a regular match. Let's see what happens here. So again, 125 minutes. You know what? Let's add another match just for some reps here. Let's put in, take a look at our roster here. How about we put Ray Stevens in and let's have him beat Cactus Jack. Just to get Stevens and Jack some work. Make it a 14 minute match. We're in St. Paul. And now let's move this down. 
one below. Let's keep it going down. Okay. So there we go. It shows just about two and a half hours. Let's take a look. 60. Good score. Ah, see, the, the scores are doing a lot better here because it's in St. Saint, Saint Paul. Yep. Assassin came back and won. Imagine that. Stevens wins. Stevens is showing his age. Yeah, and he, and he should. This is a much better score. Waller went with an 87 there. Nice. LKC showing it too? No, LKC is not showing age yet. So that's good. Maybe, like I said, next, maybe next time we'll do a six-man tag here and have some fun. Ganya and Robinson, what a big change here. They have good chemistry. That's a very good score. This is going to be a good card. Wow, another 85 here. What a difference being in St. Paul, huh? Nice. And De Beers and Slaughter did well. Okay, we can leave that then as the main event. It's going to do okay in the rest of our uh, regions and territories. Just uh, it's going to take some time to heat back up uh, Winnipeg. That's okay. So. Yeah. All right, good deal. Wow, and even though we're at the end of the month, we were still able to increase one. So that's good. Okay, that's a solid card. 8,500 people. Nice. All right, we're making, making headway here. This is getting exciting. Going to take us back to the home prompt here. And let's see what's going on in the world of wrestling here in 1987. Joel Deaton, good wrestler, big guy. Had some nice success in Japan. They liked his style over there. Never really quite fit in here. I think they put him under the hood as one of the Thunderfoots. So, oh no, Brady Boone's getting divorced. Also from Robbinsdale, Minnesota, is Brady Boone. We might have to bring him in here. There we go. We got 550,000 viewers for All Star Wrestling. That is our syndicated show. So that's a good sign. That's that's doing well. Nice. See if anything else major happened here. Stuff overseas, title changes, nothing else really applies to us here. I always for the heck of it like to take a look at money, see how we're doing. We're way ahead on ticket sales. Broadcast revenue. Wow, there's another week yet for that to pick up. Merchandise is way ahead. Everything else is about where it used to be, so. It's another successful card. We're going to keep this tour going. So I hope that you go ahead and uh, check in with us for the next episode here, where we will go over. Let me bring it up. We will go over Tour 66. We're going to change it right now. The Mario Lemieux Tour date, 66. And that's a full eight-match card. So this first one should be 10 minutes. And that's going to have Hennigan Hall versus Bachwinkle and Zabisco in Minneapolis. That should get an outstanding rating. So I hope that you tune in for the next episode here and join us. And please give us a like, give us a follow, and let's get this thing going. Let's get this thing going strong. And stick around for the tour. Let's have some fun with this 1987 Supermod. Thanks. Have a good one.